look at my abs though for real like <laughs> if if i didn't That's like exactly. ice cream if i didn't like ice cream so much i i, I could be I, this, <laughs> this could this could be me right here um <laughs> you know what I'm feeling super today. We're talking about real estate superheroes. I just wanted to show you guys this real quick because, you know, sometimes I believe I can fly. I, I had an Instagram post this week where I was like, I said, come to the edge. Come to the edge, Marky. Come to the edge with me. Come to the edge. I'm coming. And then I'm coming. I pushed Marky and she flew. Right. So that's that's how I, I feel right now. Let me see if I can go. Let me see if I can. Do I, believe I, can fly. Oh, I believe shoot. I can fly. I believe I can fly. I believe I can fly. I'm doing it! I'm doing it! Oh, yeah. I believe oh, I can goodness. fly. Real estate looks great from up here. I can touch the sky. I think about J Man all the time. What's the word? No, she's not giving up her day off. Day job. Oh, man. I did it. I did it. Mom, I told you I could fly one day. He's on the five minute to count levitate. The only power I had was that I believe we can do that. We can't demand that people step up so we don't need them halfway. You see all the bank. Shit, you can move more. You can knock down a bar and you can kill you. You can kill you. You can kill you. You can kill you. Who's in the room with you when you're making those decisions? Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome back, everybody, to Good Morning Real Estate, baby. Welcome back, welcome back. Happy April. We are here. It is National Superhero Day, if you don't know. Uh, my name is Jeremiah J. Man Monero, and to my right, we have the real estate superhero herself. <laughs> Marky Lemons Rao, Operation I've Got Houses for Sale. The oh. real estate superhero, unlike no other. Let's you don't go. want none of this. You don't want none of this. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got Carrie. And I am Carrie Little, and I am Supergirl today. And I just want to tell you, let me show girl, post, show wait a minute. Show wait a minute. Here when I'm Supergirl, oh, oh. I don't need glasses to see. <laughs> and I want to, I do want to tell you. That Wonder Woman was going to make an appearance, but she couldn't make it. So she decided to just send me some of her gear. Okay. She and 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 I'm not sharing. She keeps calling me, but I'm I, I'm busy. I'm busy selling real estate. So let's give you one of these, Wonder Woman and Supergirl. Let's go. So good morning, real estate. Uh, Carrie Jo Little, what do we have in the news this month? So, in the news, starting, well, let's say this week, RRC has their con conference happening now. But the National Association of Realtors and Women's Council has their mid-year events happening. So, if you have never attended those events go to nar.realtor and you can go to the legislative events at no cost included in your nar fees and then women's council what an opportunity you didn't have to get on a plane you didn't have to reserve a hotel you didn't have to jump in an uber to get to the hotel or to any of those events and for a, uh, the cost is minimal go to wcr.org and make sure you attend those events some other things in the news. Black Knight reports as of February of 2021, nearly 3.6 million um, are in a 90 day default occurred. Um, and this was back in 2020, the largest since 2009. 
2.1 million homeowners serious are seriously delinquent on their mortgage payments. Now, this is something you should be thinking about. More than 600,000 active forbearance plans are expiring. We know that they were extended through June. The current moratorium um, that was set to expire in March extended to June. Here's the challenge. Will people get their mortgages current? So my tip for all of you is call your mortgage company to find out if you have options. If you are a Realtor member, work with your clients to help them in this process. Now, per CoreLogic, there are serious delinquencies for FHA and VA, the highest since the greatest recession. Seriously, uh, serious delinquent rates for all um, mortgages types for are up from a year ago and some mortgages are not in forbearance. So that means people that are in default didn't even apply for the forbearance. Now really quickly, in tech, Spotify is increasing their rates at the end of April. The latest on social media, live video, as we know, right, Marky Lemons? Video has transformed social media. There is a high demand, believe it or not, J-Man for bots. More brands are going to AR and VR. And it is coming sometime this year. The death of Instagram likes is coming. So hopefully none of you actually paid for followers because you could be in trouble. User content will get more engagement and social communities are growing check out clubhouse so i am carrie little and i gave you the news if you have never seen the president give an address that will be tonight at 8 p.m central time jay man you're all hello. what's up what's up what's up hello 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 oh <clears throat> So I was saying what what had happened was first of all I was over here like damn look at my abs though for real like <laughs> if if I didn't like ice cream if I didn't like ice cream so much I I, I could be I, this, this could this could be me right here uh, <laughs> you know what I'm, I'm feeling super today we're talking about real estate superheroes I just wanted to show you guys this real quick because you know sometimes. I believe I can fly. I, I had an Instagram post this week where I was like, I said, come to the edge, come to the edge, Marky, come to the edge with me, come to the edge. I'm coming. And then I'm I coming. pushed Marky and she flew. Right. So that's, that's how I, I feel right now. Let me see if I can go. Let me see if I can. Do I this. believe I can fly. Oh, I believe shoot. I can fly. I believe I can fly. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I oh, my goodness. Fly. Real estate looks great from up here. Touch the sky. I think about <laughs> J-Man all the time. What's the part of me? She's not giving up her day job. Day job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I did it. I did it. Mom, I told you I could fly one day. <laughs> Yo, I'm flying. Woo. I'm hot because I'm flying. You ready to save real estate, J-Man? You ready to save it? Yes. You know, and, and that's what we're talking about today, real estate superheroes. Uh, Marky, go ahead, hit us. You know, I've got houses for sale. We are talking uh, in the planning for our, our broadcast, how, like, what kind of superheroes do we want to be? And everybody who's watching this, you are a superhero. We are our clients' superheroes every day. And, and that's how you got to think about it. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to give you some tips and tricks today to keep on keeping on keeping hope alive motivating your clients i think that's that's harder than ever we have to motivate ourselves number one right and then number two we then have to motivate our clients because hey it's easy to sell houses when you write one off or get one accepted but if it's 12 15 i got one client we're on 21 now in aca buyer like 100 percent financing and the other day i had to say you know what <clears throat> One day we're going to be sitting in the living room of your new home and we're going to be talking about the story, the journey that it took you to get into this home, right? And so that, that's you got to keep reminding them because it, it took them six months to get qualified, all these houses. One day we'll be, we'll be in your home and then we'll be talking about all the cliches, you know, like everything happens for a reason. 
all you know, all that good stuff. Marky, Diamond hit- is everything. Well, you know yeah. what? We talked about this the other day, and we said that we have to shift our we have to shift our mindset, right? And I one hundred percent believe if you can change your mind, you can change anything. But as you were talking, Jay, it hit me. What we need to start doing as real estate professionals and what I believe buyers need to do is some of the things that we practice in our business every single day. One, that would be affirmations. Two, a lot of us have a vision board. So for every buyer, every agent out there, because one, this would be a fun project. One, I would create a vision board. What do they want that house to look like? Because sometimes we're showing them a house is not the house that they desire and they never speak up for themselves. But how about this? Not only do I believe that agents need to have smart goals, I believe buyers need to have smart goals. And when we think about those smart goals, they need to be specific, measurable, obtainable, relevant, and time bound. The reason I say obtainable, because we have a lot of buyers looking at houses they cannot afford to buy. Or better yet, they're going to go and do an offer $20,000 over asking price with no comps, and they don't have the cash reserves to to even make the 3.5 or the 5% down. And so when we're meeting with our clients, let's add a little fun to the transaction. Let's start going over their SMART goals. We need SMART goals for our business. I believe in today's market, because of everything that is going on, on. Buyers need to have a vision board. They need to affirm over what it is that they want. We need to implement the law of attraction because as you just stated, you had a client that is on their 21st offer. And here's where things become problematic for agents. Historically, when we're writing that many offers, we have a, I would say, a non-motivated buyer. These buyers are motivated. They've listened to us. They've structured the offer the way that we asked them to structure the offer. We have sound proof why they should make the offer, and they still aren't winning. So with that being said, I took this from an agent out of the Chicago land market. Her name is Andretta, and it says, my buyer released the earnest money to the seller up front in good faith we won. We got to get our negotiation skills up. So as Mm -hmm. Carrie was just mentioning, uh, RRC Women's Council, you also have uh, the Real Estate Business Institute that has the R-E-N-E, the Real Estate Negotiation Experts. We have numerous negotiation courses uh, all across the country. And so think about taking a negotiations course if you're licensed so that you can come back and negotiate things like the ability to release the earnest money up front. That means, dear seller, if I don't do what it is I said that I was going to do, I'm going to allow you to have this deposit. And I thought that that was genius, especially for the person who believes in themselves, has affirmed over their business, and They probably don't even have to go over list price where there are no comps to support and their bank might not finance it. If Well, let me say this. The bank will finance it, but they're going to finance on the lower of the two, the sales contract or the appraised value. We have to stop writing offers that here's here's what's funny. We talked about this, right? It still has to go through a processor. It still needs an appraisal. It still needs title. And it must all go to an underwriter. So your your offer is not gospel, okay, if it does not meet the financing institution's guidelines. What are those well, guidelines? Well, let's talk, speak about this, Marky or J-Man. What do you, you said someone that needs a mortgage. Speak to the real estate agent that is trying to figure out new ways to negotiate speak to the agent that thinks that they can um waive the mortgage contingency how you gonna waive the mortgage appraisal. contingency when, i'm sorry let's what, say the appraisal go to the appraisal why are you doing this carrie do carrie doing this because of something that came up Fired you up. cannot <clears throat> waive an appraisal on a property that's being financed because the appraisal is not for you. It is for the lending organization. So you don't even have the power Mm -hmm. to waive an appraisal if you're being financed. The only people who can waive an appraisal are those who are buying cash and it is not subject to a mortgage. So here comes the problem. You're writing an offer that will never make it to the closing table. I don't care how good it look on paper. Yeah. Right, and the attorneys are going to see it. The lender is going to make you come back and fix it, and then now you've got a seller that accepted it, but they can't move forward. 
Well, let me let me tell you something that's trending in uh, New York State and and some of our surrounding areas. Though people will write offers, we have you know, 10, 15, 20 offers, thirty offers, whatever it is on a property, and they'll write it. And now it's becoming quite common for people to say how much they will pay in the difference between um, purchase price and appraised value. So they say, you know, we'll cover a ten thousand dollar gap, a twenty thousand dollar gap. We have some people like. Whatever it is, we'll cover. And so agents, a good seller's agent, is then saying, okay, I want worst case scenario. Our list price is 300. You're writing an offer for 350 and you're getting 20% down conventional. Then we need to see 20% down plus, plus your closing costs plus that 50. You're good with that. That's fine. I, if I'm representing the seller. Now, on the flip side, if I'm representing a buyer, Listen to me, people. You're representing a buyer. That buyer is going to call you in five years, seven years, eight. Be like, Marky, yeah, I want to sell my house. And then Marky's going to be like, well, girl, you uh, you went 100000 over asking, and uh, the market hasn't caught up to that price yet because this has this market has to come back down. And they're going to look to you because you were the one that was like, do it, do it, because you want to win because we're all competitive. And you know, it's we have a fiduciary duty to look out for the best interests of our clients. Well, I figure since I've got both of you, I'm going to ask another question. What do you say to the offer, the agent writing the offer that is coaching or you have a buyer that was, let's say the buyer has to sell a house or close on the house and the buyer, the, the agent is recommending that they waive the home close or the home sale contingency, but they still need that money out of that house. To close, they wrote a, they wrote right. an offer in bad faith. They wrote an they wrote an offer in bad faith. And if we go back and we look at license law, you do know you do know that sellers can force you to buy, right? So now I'm thinking I'm talking to my attorney. I want to go put a lien on this other house, right? Because <laughs> I'm pissed, right? Uh, and, and and create a cloud on title, essentially, right? Because they created one for me, because and let me say this, they didn't create a cloud on title, but, but they put me in a position to not be able to sell an asset and they don't know what I had hinging on this deal closing. So it starts to be a, a ripple effect, a domino effect, right? Where you jack me up and I start jacking up a whole bunch of people. So now let's go back to that law of attraction. Baby karma is something else. So I will say that that agent, when you talked about fiduciary responsibilities and Jay, I was getting ready to say something. When you let or you coach your client to go $10,000, $100,000 over list price and there are no comps to support it, right? Then to me, are you acting in good faith? Because when we talk about our fiduciary responsibilities, one is undivided loyalty, putting the needs and wants of our clients before our own, right? To me, you wrote an offer to make sure you can pay your mortgage next month. You did not write that offer in good faith to support that buyer client, which now means that buyer client, you've opened yourself to litigation. Because our job is to provide, and, and everybody thinks it's to sell a house. It is not to sell a house. It is we do want to get paid, but it is to protect. What does the F code of ethics say, Marky? Protect. Well, first of all, agency don't equal compensation. Let's come back to that. So you, so the goal is not for you to make money. We want to make money, but that is not the goal of license law. <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm putting my glasses back on, and I'm going to Supergirl in in my in the office because I can't see. <laughs> Supergirl. I thought Supergirl had super. She's like, what's gonna happen? She diminished. What? Well, look. Let me say, going back to the she office. Here's what's funny: when people start talking license law, the realtor code of ethics, then they forget about a whole lot of stuff. And let me say this: and my boy Nolly said it the other day. Custom does not mean right. Custom does not mean legal. Custom does not mean ethical. There's a lot of custom things that we do in the industry that violate every rule and regulation. Don't mean you're supposed to do it. As my grandmama would have said, if they're going to jump off a bridge, you're going to jump your butt off the bridge behind mm -hmm. them. Be a leader, not a follower. Read what you signed. <laughs> read, read it, read it, read it. Hold on, Carrie. This. Go ahead, Carrie. You want to say something? I know, read. I, I know, I'm going back. Oh, I'm, I see. I'm going it's back almost to my like, grade school like days. Scott, R E A D. Read, read. I, I thought that was no Dutch, Jay, man. 
Oh yeah, don't right. Oh, let me in. Let me in. Let me in. I'm about to go. I'm about to go. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Marky and I might have to show y'all. We can still jump. J-Man, can you jump? I could jump. What? Slow. I could jump through the roof. You mean she, what? He he's he's a wait wait. What is the thing you are? Uh, J-Man. I'm, I'm just J. I'm just J-Man doing the best I no. can. Sometimes better, but no. Spartan uh, uh, Ninja Warrior. Come on, yeah. thank you. Yeah, for real, for real though, in real life, not not superhero life. Yeah, in no, real not life. not pretend. I I I do epic poop every day. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but let, let's get let's get back to let's each tell a, a, a good story because I have a I have one that I heard and it wasn't me personally but once uh, you know because it's good to have conversations with people in the office you know whoever you collaborate with whoever your your circle is um, and tell stories of success right because then you can you can learn from each other because even though we've taken the negotiating course the ABR all these courses they haven't been updated for what's going on right now folks right I mean. Right, right, right now. Right, 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 right now. Right. We now. know what is Operation I Got Houses for Sale. That's right. Well, here's here's what happened. So the the buyer went on to social media. Okay. They went on to social media and they looked up the seller. They looked up the seller. Now normally look, see Mark is like oh, let me let me let me adjust myself. No, no. This is a this is a good story. Okay. Oh, they, okay. They looked up the seller and then they said Wow, they looked at their interests, and and the seller happened to play this like forty t like like a Dungeons and Dragons type game. Not my thing. If you like it, you maybe know what I'm talking about. So the buyer had actually played against the seller in this forty t game. It's like an in person Dungeons and Dragons type of scenario. They put that in the email when the offer was sent. The freaking offer got accepted. It was not the highest and best offer. But just because they had that that common interest, you know, they were like, oh, we play 40 T2. Oh, that's my dude. I'm, I'm picking him. Right. So it's like use social media. If you're not using social media for research. Right. I mean, every every listing appointment I go on, every buyer appointment before, you know, I meet with them, I go to their social media. Let me see what you about, because I will know. And like I go like this, like three swipes at least up. I look through your feed. I got you. I know what you're, you know. Because we, we clearly know if you go to J Man's Instagram, we know you are doing the Humpty Dance. The Humpty Dance is well. Stop what fact. you're doing, because I'm about to ruin the image and the style that you're used to. Okay, I just had to say. <laughs> <laughs> so my line name for Delta Sigma Theta is Humpty from the Humpty Dance. And so my entertainment while I was pledging was to always do the Humpty Dance. Humpty number six, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated Lambda Chapter Spring 90. Just had to throw that all out there. <laughs> so here's your chance to do the hump. Uh, oh, do me, baby. I do the hump, the hump. Uh, uh, Wait, the Mark, hump, you know, I'm, I'm putting uh, everything uh, on, on Facebook because you got a reel coming called um, Custom. That you're gonna be doing. Marky's next reel is custom doesn't mean, and Marky is going to end up doing the Humpty dance. I, I see it coming. Ooh. Ah, yeah, custom that custom, and when I and I don't mean custom design. I mean the customs that you see everybody else do it. Can I say something? People kill me when they tell you about their attorney. The attorneys that I listen to are the attorney for my association, my state association, and NAR. I do not care that you are an esquire or an attorney. It does not mean that you are an expert to protect me and my occupation of what I do. So nine times out of 10, I see a bunch of jacked up attorneys. I'm just throwing that out there. So <laughs> listen to the attorney for the association, and you got three of them at three levels, local, state right. and national right. they're there to protect you these other attorneys they're they not about you they look they're not about this real to life get you they, a real yeah, yeah. attorney <laughs> they, they don't know oh, it's kind of like when you when you meet a client they're like yeah i used to sell real estate let me tell you how it's done i'm like well you used to sell means you weren't any good at it so you hired an expert let me do my thing right <laughs> you used to like we're in sales a good salesperson doesn't used to do it ever again. Like you're good at it. You're good at it. And you keep on doing it. I used to sell real estate. 
crazy. I'm probably gonna get a lot of attorneys inboxing me. And <laughs> guess what? And they still can't tell me how to do my job. That's, That's right. my responsibility to That's read right. Illinois tell license you. law and the Realtors Code of Ethics. Better yet, I got a Matt Defines. I got me a. I got me. I got me another attorney. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's good to have a good attorney in your back pocket. And I was talking to an attorney yesterday and I had to say respectfully, because I read, read, because I read license law, because I used to work for attorneys, I have figured out how to, and I know I'm going to get the DM too, Marky, how to get the attorneys to do what I need them to do because I know the rules. So yeah, you're right. Well, and, yeah. and it all depends where you're watching this from in the country because some, you know some of us are attorney states, some are title. And if you're in a title state, sometimes it goes right to the title company and then there's really nobody else that looks looks that over. They might have one attorney for the entire title company that goes like this. Stamp. And I'll say it's, it's worth hiring an attorney to read over documents. It just, it's like the, I, I had an attorney say it like this. An attorney is one of the best forms of insurance you can have because sometimes you don't know the language. You're not going to go Google what, um, uh, eminent domain me means, but you probably should know if you pass the real estate exam, but it's not our job to practice law. So even my twin sister, when they bought in California, they hired an attorney and they typically don't use attorneys. So it's just something to think. About. I want to clarify. I believe my buyers and sellers need their attorney, but it's when people call to tell us how we're supposed to do our job. Right. Right. Like the attorney is going to check the real to no bull. You can't check me. But I, I don't intervene uh, with the them thing. representing the, the buyer and the seller. Right. Because I know that I'm not an attorney, but I don't allow them to tell me how to do my job. And I see a lot of attorneys telling realtors, real as licensed professionals, how they're supposed to do their job. I can tell you nine times out of 10, they're not well versed in your job. Let them close that real estate deal, but not tell you what to do. Well, let's let's give them some su success strategies. Carrie, what, what do you got for getting multiple offers accepted, being the buyer's agent superhero, so that when you go to the house, like Terry Watson would say, there, there's a candle underneath your picture saying like, oh, this is my agent. You know, <laughs> like. It's I mean, I, I don't, I, maybe you should let Marky go first, because I don't know what Marky's going to say. Well, um, I don't mind saying something. Uh, I think my, I don't know if everybody knows we have 300 agents uh, between our two offices, 20 of them I recruited. So my day to day transactions are me working with my agents. Let me tell you what I believe wholeheartedly works. And this would be a uh, shout out to the ABR class. I think it is definitely time now that everyone start to execute exclusive buyer representation agreements. I believe now is the time that if you've never done a CMA, your local MLS needs to be your best friend because you need to write offers that are supported by numbers, which you should have always been doing. Um, and then the next thing is, I think we need to coach our buyers into understanding it is not about them in today's market. It is 100% about the seller. And so going and doing that research, getting a better understanding of what is important. And everyone always makes the assumption that it is going to be the highest and best offer. That is simply not the truth. It could be a waiver of the earnest money. If you waste my time, I'm going to get paid. Look, if it's enough, it might cover all my bills for the month. And I'm okay because I really wasn't trying to move that fast. Have you thought about that? Right. Or not come on now, right? It, it, it there could be some people that's a, that's a, that house. to me is one of the best ideas so far. Look, you can stay in your house for the next six months, you could have six failed contracts, right? And you could get all your bills covered because you really weren't trying to leave now anyway <laughs> and still sell, <laughs> right? I'm just I just wanted to throw that out there because to me, nothing in life is black or white. We got to look at all these numerous shades of gray. And here's the next thing if you can, definitely. When cash deals are winning, especially when they don't have an appraisal or mortgage contingency, because what that seller feels is if this is a done deal, make it feel, do everything possible for the seller to make them feel like this is a done deal. And so just to echo what Marky said, I'm the person that it's all about the data. If you are working with a buyer that has a, uh, first of all, let me step, go back. 
I truly believe, and I don't know what markets you're in, I don't know what mortgage com companies you're working with, but some of you need to push back with your mortgage companies and work uh, with a mortgage company or find out how they can figure out how to get the, the, your buyer, their buyer fully underwritten. Right. Because when you are fully underwritten, uh, first, and then it comes back to the strategy of how you write the letter. And then if you give up your earnest money, I mean, golden, because fully underwritten means you have turned in all of your paperwork. The underwriter has screened all of your documents. They have figured out that, no, you didn't have a hidden bankruptcy. No, you didn't um, have hidden taxes that weren't paid. No, you didn't have child support that's on your credit. So you are fully underwritten. All you need is, and there might be a few other things, you need a property. May, and you probably need to have your inspection and you need the appraisal. So those are three things that you know you will need. And then back to the data, you got to know the data. If you have a buyer that's approved for $300,000 and that's all they can do and you are looking at $300,000, their best, best offer is $300,000. So maybe they need to be looking at a lower price. And my other tip will be is back to operation. I've got houses for sale is you have a property that they really want and they know they're in a multiple offer situation. What I would do, and this is new, Marky, and I don't even know if we talked about it. I would, as the real estate agent, write a letter and I would walk the neighborhood, if it's allowed, because it is allowed in, in Illinois, maybe not New York, or I would send a mailer out if it's allowed and say, I have a buyer. We, um, we didn't win the offer on this property and my buyer wants to live in this neighborhood. If you are considering selling, call me and we can make sure that you don't have long lines for an open house, that you don't have multiple offers. Yeah. My buyer is fully underwritten and we can close quickly or we are willing to give you time to sell your house. Yeah. That's my just, tip. Patience. Marthy, you really want to say something? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> she she like she froze. She went. I, I just wanted. I just. I, <laughs> I just wanted to add. We we've done that successfully as well. Uh, and, and I would even just add something in there. Like this is not a tactic to list the house. We do not want to list your house. We just want to sell it to the buyer that we're working with who wants to live here in this neighborhood because we are their real estate superhero, right? Um, da -da -da -da. um but. And, and to piggyback what you said about exclusive right to represent or, or buyer contracts, depending on where you are and what you call them, uh, I, I did a 45-minute live stream on this last week. It's in goodmorningrealestate.live in the membership side for free for you guys, okay? It's called Stop Getting Cheated On because that's what it's all about. You think you have this great relationship. You're like, my buyers like me. We're, we get along great till you lose one offer, they love two you. offer, and then three all offers. Of a sudden, and then they're like, man, who's this dude? I thought he was a superhero. He's not getting me the offers. And it starts with you not not creating realistic expectations in the beginning of what the market's doing and, and what to expect and communicating effectively. Because if they think it's you, then then that's where they're going to cheat on you. They're going to find them for sale by owner. They might go to new construction. And then the, the builder's going to say, oh, you don't need a, uh, somebody to represent you. We could take care of that. It's one of the only transactions where you start here and you end up here. You know, you walk in at 300 and you leave at four. You're like, you don't even know what happened here. <laughs> so, and I have so, a DM from a buyer that did just that. The buyer, the buyer posted, I need a real estate agent. The buyer did. The agent didn't. She was already working with an agent. And then I got tagged. I, I don't comment. I just went right to the messages and I said, hey, um, I see you're looking for an agent. And then what she did was that she told me, well, I'm already working with an agent, but the agent keeps losing offers. So it became a whole fact finding and it wasn't the agent. I mean, it was the agent. The agent didn't do any discovery. The agent hadn't figured out that this person was looking for an investment property. This person was looking for a deal in a hot market. And this person wasn't, I don't even, didn't even have a pre-approval. What are we doing? So, so they were kids, cheating on them because the agent didn't do what they were supposed to do. Well, they didn't do anything they were supposed to do, right? Because wh why would you take a pre-approved buyer out in today's real estate market? Um, let, well, I'm not going to go down that route. Let me come back. I think we need to go back and we need to listen to this portion of our show. And we need to put together a step-by-step -step process because now I'm thinking as a broker, right? And you have ownership and you have all these agents. I need to ask all of my agents 
what deals have they written that have not been accepted so that we could sit down and go through Remind, come up with a strat plan to do direct mail campaigns with Facebook ads and the Surf Bot a lot, right? Mm -hmm. and start churning these puppies. But think about the language of that postcard. We have fully written, underwrite, uh, underwritten buyers who would willing, we, if we could get them in contract, right, to state that they would waive earnest money. Like we could just go down this whole list of all, all the stuff they've seen in a contract that our buyers are willing to handle and send that out as a direct mail piece because yeah. they'd be like what say yeah, what like, and like then, would you like to sell your house would you like to not have to show it would you like to not have to get it ready would you like it in, like check check would check? you like yes, the buyer to be me. fully up make it a it. checklist yeah right yeah. make it a checklist and look make it a checklist and here i got the i got the magic sauce did you know because i want to know if they scan that qr code i make that qr code now with the bitly link and i know how many people have scanned the qr code just if you want a full fledged, I think we could look. We could box that, guys. Uh, okay, we'll come back. We'll come back. We'll come back. We're getting excited. Well, it, there's a lot of resources. If you guys are watching this for the first time, or maybe you've watched it a bunch of times, and you still haven't gone to Good Morning Real Estate Thought Live, we create that membership platform for you. When Carrie does a video, when Marky does a video, when I do a video, it automatically will populate in there because we have our YouTube playlists. Some of it, some of that stuff is unlisted, plus all of the resources that are created. It's free 99, folks. Your favorite F word on the planet, okay? Free. Free, free, free. I heard free. free. You said our YouTube channel is feeding in there. I guess I need to go back in and look. Yeah. Yeah, we better go look, Carrie, because we don't know what. We don't know all what we doing around here. We all over the place. But we understand systems. We understand how to survive a realist. Look, we, we survived. 2008 to 2012. So we got stories. We have tactics for you. Uh, I believe the very first thing is we have to change our language. Carrie and I no longer say that we have an inventory issue. We have a listed property issue and it doesn't have to be listed. Everybody wants a freaking listing. I'm not saying you don't want to have relationships with sellers. What I'm saying is if you got an all-star roster of buyers, you want to have inventory for them that they don't have to compete stand in long lines and be subject to a multiple bid if you want to eat for the next couple of months i'm just throwing out i, I want you baby to eat i want you to have some scrambled eggs and bacon for breakfast okay <laughs> i'm just saying i want you to be able to eat Woo! well <clears throat> let me add uh what one other thing because when we're talking about technology and apps and programs and people always ask me like how how to stay ahead of the curve uh than everybody else you should have received an email from Realtor Magazine probably yesterday or the day before, sometime this week. Uh, in there, they talk about the REACH program. The REACH program is where NAR invests in new technology. And in there, just looking at the REACH class of 2021, uh, they have a modern content management platform enabling creators and real estate pro professionals to collaborate. They have a next generation approach to furniture and home decor rental. They have uh, a fast growing company to do home swap. It's called knock where it will allow people to purchase a home. They'll give them money to fix up their home. And then the people sell the home. There's, there's, there's groundbreaking stuff in here. Just check it out. We're not going to go through them all. Uh, Landis milestones and NN digital customer experience platform for the next generation of homeowners. Um, and then plunk the first mobile app ev leveraging AI to forecast home valuation and remodeling projects in real time. I'm going to post a link in the, in the comments so you guys can go there and check it out. That's kind of cool. Well, I actually got to see some of the reach, um, the incubator programs. These are small businesses trying to expand. So I actually got to see some of them actually give their pitches almost like a shark tank and it is really cool. So we'll have to read that article. And if you attend the Realtor Conference and Expo, there is just one segment. And generally, it is a packed house where we all go and look at everybody in the reach do their thing. And so come on out to San Diego in November for the Realtor Conference and Expo. And you can see some of these companies firsthand and interact with their leadership teams. Yeah, that's kind of cool. That if you've never if you've never gone outside to an NAR convention, you need to go. So start. Listen, you should have saved your money because we haven't been outside to any conferences since last since over a year ago. So you should have the money to go. 
Save that money. Be to go. <clears throat> oh, you know what? Here's one last thing, I guess, before we go. We're, we're going to do the after hours networking here, the, the, the after party. Are we right okay. here? I mean, it's 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 ready. Uh, but it, I, I do want to say this because many agents have, are having the best, their best careers, especially if you're participating in six and twelve. I'm sure you're seeing numbers like you've never seen in your lifetime. And I think it's it's so important, you know, to think about generational wealth. Like if you're you're an agent, you're making money. Don't don't go buy chains and watches and fancy cars, unless you know you're Carrie's husband. Um, no. right. <laughs> but they, you did, that's like a hobby. Uh, you know, buy houses. If you're in real estate, look at, she's got, is that M for Monero? That's for J man. That's for, that's for J Jeremiah C man Monero. Uh, but what you should be doing, keep, keep your credit, keep your credit right. And then as you see opportunities to purchase real estate, <laughs> look at, she's got, as you Mark, Mark is telling she's more, estate, listen, buy. listen, listen, what I'm right? hearing J man say is, Patience, save your money, invest in, invest in real estate, and then you can go out and buy some of these things. Yes, my husband yeah. is addicted to cars. It's his hobby. He is not paying that's full price hobby. for right. anything. We right. have no car payments. <laughs> right. That's that's different than the person who's like, I'm balling, but I got a car payment that's 700 bucks a month and I have an apartment. And oh, I, no, I we saw that new estate. Rolls Royce truck. Is three hundred thousand dollars. We saw it in the parking lot, and of um, of the bowling alley, and we were like, "Their note is it has to be like a mortgage payment." Right, right. Oh, it supersedes a mortgage payment. That's a two thousand dollar a month car note, easily, probably about twenty two twenty twenty two thousand two hundred fifty dollars. So if that's your car payment, and you're watching this right now, you can invest in Rochester and have three properties. For what, for what your car <laughs> payment is, man. Three income producing properties, my friend. Not a depreciating asset that makes no money. Yeah, just All keep right. watching. I'm sure there's a reel coming out now from Marky on how to be cute and not spend all your money. <laughs> and I figured it out. <laughs> Uh, I have figured it out. Look, I'm too old. I'm older than everybody sitting here. I'll be 51. It is not cute to spend all your money. And here, what I would say, both of my grandmothers did not work for at least 10 years before their death. Both of them had houses paid for and plenty of money in the bank. One was a housekeeper, the other one was a cashier. My goal in life is to be like Big yes, Mama and, and dear. Okay, That's be like Big want. Mama and what dear. your car payment is. <laughs> Look, J-Man is going back through the audio. <laughs> my bad. My bad. My bad. It's all no, right. I, I, I wanted to put the bit.ly link, so it's like, you know, I, I had to go to the Facebook events. Hard to it's okay. It's all right. Going. I got you. We it's all going down. Time. We've all done 10 things today. We have. We've been and up look, early. you gotta let so your head back down to here. Supergirl. Let me but go look, back to but, but your whole Supergirl, you got it faded with that hair. When you throw that look hair, that, you gotta throw your hair though. Hair is super. Throw it, look throw it. it. There you go. go. Throw the hair, girl. There it is. Oh, yes, honey. You giving it to him. Give it to him. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what else in closing you guys wanna add before we go over to the after party? Again, go to goodmorningrealestate.live, the after party. The Zoom link is in there. You should be able to go right in. Uh, maybe Carrie, who's quick on the comment um, posting, could put the link for that in the comments if she's quick enough. I think we should set up the system today that we said we was going to do. I think we should set that whole system up. Make it productive Where's for the, us. What's the link? Tell me the link. Uh, go to goodmorningrealestate.live. And then on the bottom, it says join the after party. Uh, they're going to have to opt in for free. And then you should be able to click that link and it should open up the Zoom. Uh, if not, we'll we'll put the link in the comments of the Facebook stream right now. All right. All right. All drop right. that link. Drop that link. What else? We got to hit them with the go hard, go home, I guess, before we, we exit. Go right? hard or go home. Here we go. Go hard. Okay. We got everybody. Make sure y'all come join us at this after party. Wait a minute. We didn't even play the video. Oh, we got to play the video. Oh, man. shoot. Hold, don't go anywhere, folks. This was an important part of our broadcast, but.
J Man so forgets sometimes. So, with the theme of superheroes, this is so good. Um, if you don't have Disney Plus, you don't. Maybe you're not a a, a Marvel Comics fan, but if you went to the NAR, um, we met many of you at the NAR Virtual Expo and conference. And they had Anthony Mackie speaking on fair housing. Now, Anthony Mackie is the Falcon, and it, there's a show called Falcon and the Winter Soldier. He is now the new Captain America. Okay, spoiler alert if you didn't see it. Too bad. <laughs> now you know. I want to play this, this, this video because to me, when I saw this, man, it wasn't just speaking in the show. Like he was speaking to the world right now for everything that's going on. So here we go. The only power I have is that I believe we can do better. We can't demand that people step up and we don't meet them halfway. You control the banks. Shit, you can move borders. You can knock down a forest with the email. You can feed a million people with the phone call. But the question is, Who's in the room with you when you're making those decisions? Hmm? Is it the people you're going to impact? Or is it just more people like you? I mean, this girl died trying to stop you. And no. If that wow. doesn't hit you right here, and, and, and that was a shortened version right before that, he said, you think. The senator said to him, you have no idea how hard, hard this is. And he said, do you know how hard it is to be a black Captain America? Right in the right off the bat, a million people are hating me for what I do. And so, man, it's me and my son, my 10 year old son were watching that. We looked at each other like that's deep. You know, that's deep. It, I, yeah, he had a whole platform because I saw all the entire series. So if you haven't seen. It is the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Don't go looking for Captain America. Let me yeah. say what's funny. I didn't have Disney Channel, but Austin's been working really hard. And so he asked, he had like $100. He was like, uh, can you go and subscribe for me just to watch that one show? See. You need to pay for it monthly. There's so much that it's yeah. worth it. I pay for it for a year. He got it for a year. He might feel different when he turned 15 about the channel. So we'll see. Well, no, it's, you know, no, they got all the heavy hitting marks. I'm over 15. I, I, I still watch it. You, know, and, yeah, you, and, you can go watch the, the Mandalorian, like all of it. So it's worth it. Yeah. Wow. So, so I, it, it's just happy. It, it brings, it warms my soul as a minority in America to see somebody of color, a superhero for America. Now, I understand we had the Black Panther, but he's from Wakanda, which was a made up country to begin with, to have somebody that's representing, you know, and, and rest in peace, um, Black Panther, man, to talk about somebody else. But um, to have somebody of color that our kids can look up to and aspire to be, like, that's groundbreaking, in, in my opinion. So we applaud Anthony Mackie. Who was a speaker. That's right. At the first virtual realtor conference and expo. <laughs> and he was just broke it down from the heart, you know, talking about how he came from humble beginnings in, in Louisiana. They lost everything. So yep, it's got, sure got my did. support. All right. Now we're going to go hard and go home or go home, okay. but we're not going home because we're going to go to the after party. Here we go. Squad, squad, now you're looking man down. Funny high foes turn a friend.